بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم النهارده هنتكلم عن الاوتونوميك جانجليا والمود اوف اوتونوميك اكشن ايه هي الاوتونوميك جانجليا الديفينيشن بتاعها ان هي عباره عن كوليكشن اوف نيرف سيل بوديز اوتسايد سنترال نيرفوس سيستم تجمعات من الاجسام الخلايا العصبيه خارج الجهاز العصبي المركزي وير ذا بري جانجليونيك فايبرز ريلي ويز ذا بوست جانجليونيك فايبرز بري جانجليونيك فايبر ارايز فروم ذا سنترال نيرفوس سيستم اند ريلي ان ذا اوتونوميك جانجليا وايل ذا بوست جانجليونيك فايبر ارايز فروم ذا اوتونوميك جانجليا اند باست تو سبلاي ذا افكتور اوركان as you see here this is the preganglionic fiber arise from the central nervous system and terminate here where another cell body start to form the postganglionic fiber that pass to the effector organ so this is the preganglionic fiber and this is the postganglionic fiber this is a picture for the ganglia where collection of cell bodies make this swelling this is called ganglia there are three types of the autonomic ganglia first the lateral or baro vertebral and the collateral or pre vertebral and terminal ganglia This is the lateral. This is the collateral ganglia. Also here, this is preganglionic. This is lateral, and this is collateral ganglia. Also, this is the lateral, and this is the collateral ganglia. This is the lateral present on both sides of the spinal cord or vertebral column and this is the collateral present where the uh, uh, big arteries uh, or big arterial uh, branches arise from the abdominal aorta. First, the lateral ganglia. We speak about its site and type of relay and uh, the uh, types of these lateral ganglia. Uh, first, what is about the site of the lateral ganglia? They uh, form what is called sympathetic chain because they resemble the chain. And the called sympathetic because uh, only sympathetic relay at this ganglia. Uh, at the, they are present on both sides of spinal cord and extend from the base of the skull to the coccyx. Uh, what is a type of relay? Uh, what is mean by type of relay? Mean here that uh, sympathetic or parasympathetic terminate at this ganglia. Here, uh, the lateral ganglia is specified for the sympathetic fiber only. No parasympathetic fiber. What is the type of the lateral ganglia? There are uh, 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 there are uh, twenty three uh, to twenty four ganglia divided as following: first cervical ganglia. There are three cervical ganglia. Superior, middle, and inferior, and sometimes the inferior cervical ganglia. Join with the first one or two thoracic ganglia to form a big ganglia called stellate ganglia. Uh, the thoracic ganglia they are from ten to twelve pairs of ganglia and lumbar and sacral and coccygeal ganglia. This is the now we speak about the collateral ganglia. 
they are present uh, where uh, the big arteries arise from the abdominal aorta and they, uh, they, they relay for mainly sympathetic and few parasympathetic this is the big ganglionic pass through the lateral here not stop or not relay and stop here at the collateral ganglia where post ganglionic arise to pass to the effector organ what is the type of the of the lateral ganglia? Celiac, subiromycentric, renal, and hypogastric. This is uh, named according to uh, their uh, presence or their site near the uh, big branches of the abdominal aorta. This is celiac, subiromycentric, renal, and hypogastric. Finally, the terminal ganglia, where is the terminal ganglia present? They are present near the wall of the organs or uh, in the wall of the organ. Uh, what is the type of autonomic relay here? Only parasympathetic relay here in the terminal ganglia. So here, this is the sympathetic chain or lateral. This is uh, the collateral ganglia and this is the terminal present in the wall of the effector organ. What is the function of autonomic ganglia? There, are, uh, only, there is only one function here which is uh, they act as distributing centers. Uh, the, the activity of the preganglionic fiber can stimulate or activate large number of postganglionic fi fibers via the ganglia for example one sympathetic preganglionic fiber can activate or stimulate 32 postganglionic fibers so the ratio is 1 to 32 while one parasympathetic preganglionic fiber can activate two fiber of postganglionic uh, so the ratio is 1 to 2 so here the parasympathetic activity is much limited than the sympathetic what about the properties of the autonomic ganglia there are five properties first it, uh, what is called unidirectional conduction uni means one direction means that the impulse travel in one direction from the preganglionic fibers to the postganglionic fiber and not in the opposite or reverse direction the second is that one relay one relay means here the autonomic efferent relay only once in the autonomic ganglia but uh, it may pass through more than one ganglia but not relay relay means it terminate The third property that the, what is the chemical transmitter in the autonomic ganglia? It is the acetylcholine. In at all autonomic ganglia, either lateral, collateral, terminal, either sympathetic or parasympathetic, the only chemical transmitter at all autonomic ganglia is the acetylcholine. A delay of transmission, this is the fourth probability, means that the uh, conduction of the impulse in uh, the autonomic ganglia take a uh, slightly long time, which means a uh, few of seconds. Uh, the last property is what is called conversion or divergence. Convergence here means that, as you see, the preganglionic fibers uh, is, uh, terminate at only one postganglionic fiber, and this is rare. This conversion probability is rare. While the divergence means one preganglionic fiber can terminate at more than one postganglionic fiber, this is called diversion, and this is the common. why because this is the uh, resemble the distributing function of autonomic ganglia now we speak about the mode of autonomic action there are five modes of autonomic action first the reciprocal action second the 
antagonistic action and complementary action and same action and single action what is meaning by reciprocal action this means that when one system is stimulated the other system is inhibited in the same effector organ so here the sympathetic and the parasympathetic act in a synchronized manner for example, the cardiac muscle is double innervated by sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So, sympathetic stimulation lead to stimulation of all properties of the heart, while the parasympathetic stimulation lead to inhibition of all properties of the heart. This is a picture for the uh, reciprocal action. When one system is stimulated, the other system is inhibited. The second type of mode of autonomic action is the antagonistic action. This means that sympathetic and parasympathetic have an opposite action in the same effector organ. So they need no for, need no for synchronization between these two systems. For example, in the gastrointestinal tract, it is innervated by sympathetic and parasympathetic. So sympathetic lead to decrease evacuation of the gastrointestinal tract when the while the parasympathetic lead to increase its evacuation. The third type of action is the complementary action, which uh, for example uh, uh, examples for this action, what is called the act of grief. In this act of grief, the sympathetic gives the energy for performance, while the parasympathetic produces the resulting sweeping sign. The complementary action also has another example, like in coitus. The parasympathetic first causes erection of the erectile tissue, then the sympathetic lead to ejaculation. The fourth type of mode of autonomic action is the uh, same action. This means that both sympathetic and the parasympathetic produce the same action in some organs, like in the salivary glands and salivary secretion. Here, the parasympathetic produces large amount of salivary secretion bore in enzymes, while sympathetic stimulation produces small amount of the salivary secretion that is rich in enzymes. This is called the trophic uh, secretion. The fifth uh, uh, mode of action is the single innervation. This means that in some organ there is only, only single autonomic supply, either sympathetic or parasympathetic. For example, the autonomic structure uh, in the skin, like skin blood vessels, like skeletal blood vessels, uh, like ventricle, like dilator pupillae muscle of the eye, suprarenal medulla, all these supplied by the sympathetic only. While uh, uh, there are examples for uh, the uh, parasympathetic innervation, like constrictor pupillae muscle, ciliary muscle of the eye, gastric and pancreatic glands, lacrimal glands, intestinal glands, all supplied by the parasympathetic only. So here, the single sympathetic innervation include, for example, dilator pupillae muscle in the eye, blood vessels of skeletal muscle, ventricles, and autonomic structure in the skin like blood vessels, rector billy muscles that responsible for erection of the hair, and sweet glands, and finally suprarenal medulla. While the single parasympathetic innervation, including that constrictor pupillae muscle of the eye, ciliary muscle of the eye, gastric and pancreatic glands, and finally lacrimal and bronchial glands. So now we start to divide the autonomic nervous system into a two divisions, sympathetic and parasympathetic. First, what is the autonomic nervous system? It is the system that uh, 
uh, responsible for control the activity of the viscera like like heart blood vessels glands and the smooth muscles or plain muscles so it is called the visceral or involuntary nervous system and there are two class classifications for this autonomic nervous system either anatomical classification uh, where this system arise or functional classification or physiological uh, classification for this system the anatomical classification for the autonomic nervous system that where the uh, autonomic arise autonomic nervous system arise it may arise from cranial part or thoracolumbar part or sacral part So the cranial autonomic, it is arise from where from some centers in the brain stem, and carried in some cranial nerves, including what four cranial nerves only: oculomotor or third cranial nerve, or facial or uh, the seventh cranial nerve, glossopharyngeal or ninth cranial nerve, and vagus or tenth cranial nerve. The second uh, part of the autonomic, according to the anatomical classification, it arises from the thoracolumbar region, where it arises from the lateral horn cell of all thoracic and the upper four lumbar segments. Uh, the final part of the autonomic arises from the lateral horn cell of the sacral two, three, and four segments, so called sacral uh, autonomic. So here, this is the cranial part, this is sacral part, and this is the thoracolumbar part. While the functional classification, we divide the autonomic either sympathetic or parasympathetic. Sympathetic or it is arise from the thoracolumbar, so called thoracolumbar or sympathetic. And the second is the parasympathetic or craniosacral part. This is the sympathetic, and this is the parasympathetic, and this is the parasympathetic. We must to note that not all cranial nerves carry autonomic fibers, only they are four nerves. 3, 7, 9, and 10 cranial nerves, while other cranial nerves don't carry autonomic fibers. Also, not all the, the uh, uh, segments of the spinal cord give autonomic innervation. For example, cervical segments and number 5 and sacral 1 and sacral 5 don't give any autonomic innervation. Also, we must to note that the sympathetic distribution is wider than the parasympathetic. Uh, what is about the sympathetic ganglia? The sympathetic ganglia including both lateral and collateral as we mentioned previously. So the sympathetic ganglia here, it is uh, from 30 uh, to 23 to 24 and including cervical ganglia, superior, middle and inferior, thoracic ganglia from 10 to 12 uh, pairs and the lumbar uh, including four bears and sacral including four bears and one coccygeal ganglia. Uh, second is collateral sympathetic ganglia that including either celiac, uh, mesenteric and renal ganglia. Uh, through it the greater splanchnic nerve, greater splanchnic nerve give uh, the ganglionic fiber and this is nerve both to the abdominal viscera so called uh, greater splanchnic nerve splanchnic means uh, visceral and uh, the hypogastric ganglion uh, that uh, receive fibers from the lesser splanchnic nerve and both to the pelvic viscera thank you